Okay, so just a little overview of what we're doing. Um, Segovia uh, is building an infrastructure to do uh, delivered goods installed. You all saw stuff like that today, actually, with our company in that car. Um, they're building infrastructure to deliver goods and services to the world for primarily right now through direct cash donations um, in developing countries. Their clients are NGOs and governments uh, who want to give aid directly to individuals. Um, so what they do is they go out into the field with teams, they collect data on people to assess their eligibility. Um, they visit the same people over and over again um, to uh, verify that it's the same person every time and to reduce fraud. And they would like some form of biometric identifier um, to confirm that on each of those visits, uh, they are seeing the same person. They're going out in areas where people typically don't have IDs. Um, so, the little slide is, uh, is it, right now their main use case is for uh, acute disaster certain areas, so flooding, earthquake. Um, NGOs go in. Um, the idea is right now it is extremely chaotic uh, when they go in. Like, one of their clients at the Red Cross and, uh, in Pakistan, and right now their method is they literally go in in a truck with a bunch of guys with guns hanging off the side of the truck, that's their armored car. Um, and they have everyone lined up, and then they just write their name on a list and hand them money, and it's a, it's a truck full of money with a line of people waiting to get it, it's, it's a mess. Um, they would like to bring some order to this through biometrics, because right now it's just everyone saying, I swear I'm this guy, please give me the money. And hopefully it's all orderly. Oh, yeah, like that, cool. Um, anyway, so hacking number one, we got this, right now for our biometric, we're using this palm bank scanner from Fujitsu. Um, it's extremely accurate. We got it running on the first hack day, running just like Fujitsu's sample code. Um, and we got it talking to local databases. Our goal for today's hack day was to integrate it to Segovia's existing backend um, and access that as a result of activity through the palm scan. Um, last hack day, we had hoped that maybe we would ultimately move away from the palm bank scanner, mostly for like engineering fun because it's been a lot of like integrating this existing SDK and we wanted to experiment with other biometric systems. Um, these things are really expensive, they're like $300 each. Um, we thought that if we could get something, right now they go and collect data on Android tablets, we thought if we could get something that would integrate an Android tablet, like use a camera or a microphone, maybe like facial recognition or some other, something else to just use the sensors on a tablet, if we could make it more expensive, that'd be attractive. Um, but their main concern is accuracy. You like to be able to go out and say that this is 99.9% .9 accurate. That like a lot of their clients going forward, they're planning on using uh, national banks. And that's a big selling point. Um, and so when we ran the cost analysis looking at um, the Palm Bay Reader versus some other commercial facial recognition or image recognition technologies, um, the Palm Bay Reader actually comes out cheaper. Um, the reader is $300, but you only need one per collection agent. Um, they're durable and they're very accurate. You can see they're like, significantly more accurate than, if you look at facial recognition and ear geometry, it's, it's an image that takes, extracts features from the shape of the ear. Um, the facial recognition self technology works on an Android phone, uh, which is nice. Um, however, um, like a, they sell, sorry, they sell proprietary hardware, uh, which is uh, $503 a unit or $100 for a phone, and they charge $14,000. Uh, you have to run it on their server, and it's a $14,000 license, which is kind of crazy. You also have to give them your data, um, which is also a downside. Scovia has its own servers. Um, the ear, ge er, ear geometry recognition charges per ID four dollars, which is also kind of crazy. Not like it's not a license per device. Every time you scan an ear and it identifies it, it bills you three ninety nine. Um, and so, if you assume that you're going out four hundred collection units and doing a hundred thousand users, which is not 
hundred thousand IDs is like online with what they're doing now in their pilot project. Um, the palm bay reader is only three hundred dollars a unit for the only for the scanner. And then it's just a three thousand dollars one time cost for their SDK, and after a couple months, it's actually significantly cheaper than other commercial stuff. So now uh, on to the right. So that was the business update. Uh, on the technical update, uh, for the guys that were last time on the presentation, we got the, the brain reader, the palm reader to scan and enroll people, and that was just based on their own interface. And as Neil mentioned, we integrated now into uh, Segovia. That was the main goal. It was a pretty ambitious goal, but these guys were amazing during the day. And then we split into three, three main tasks. One is connecting to their servers, the database and the web server. And then we were able to uh, modify some of the entries in the database. And also we extended the Fujitsu app to connect to Segovia. So let's do a demo so you can understand better what we're talking about. So um, on this, what we're seeing here is the, the, uh, the Fujitsu GUI. And what is happening, if somebody wants to enroll in this case, uh, to identify in, the, in this case, it's Neil, he's gonna recognize, he's not only gonna say yes, it's Neil, and he's gonna go also to Segovia website, and it's gonna be, yeah, this is Neil, this is where you live, and you're able to get some money. This, so, is, also, this is also to help out when people are actually collect, uh, distributing the money, the person can't say, no way, the system did, got it wrong, and then the, we are arguing with the field agent. This actually allows it to say, okay, this is my palm, this is who I am, this is my profile, these are my pictures, yeah, I can't really dispute this. Then you either get the, get the aid or don't get the aid. So there's an, an extra enforcement for the actual field agent when it's distributed. All right, and then uh, to finalize this uh, presentation, there's the next steps for us. Uh, business steps that are gonna come up soon. Um, is looking to um, if people really want to do this in their countries. If they really wanna uh, have a different biometric, and then what the biometrics can be used for. And the engineer, we're gonna extend the uh, application functionality for enrollment, not only for verification, and then uh, load information from server into Java application. Any questions? <coughs> Um, so, uh, is there any option to use fingerprints? Um, like maybe with like, with like a lens you could attach to an Android tablet and kind of scan that? That was, that was their original plan, uh, but since most of the people who they're going out to work as day laborers, mm -hmm. um, calluses are a big issue. They have like major accuracy problems using fingerprint scanners. You got, your actual fingerprint actually deteriorates depending on the labor you're doing, and so the, the nodes that are there to identify them actually get they start disappearing. That's why people who work in cement or people who work in carpentry or manual labor actually will not have uh, unique identifiers there. 